Once again, Merry Christmas Film Fanatics, Film Holmes here with another rendition of Too Many Movies. So the last two videos I talked about uh, the Star Wars original trilogy, then the Star Wars prequel trilogy, and now we are on to a, the newest Star Wars trilogy, episodes 7, 8, and 9. Of course, only episode 7 is out at the moment. Uh, came out last December. Of course, that's what I'm going to talk about today, is Star Wars The Force Awakens. I don't know why they don't put episode 7 in there. I don't know why they do that. But that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I've never been able to talk about it before. A brand new Star Wars trilogy, and let's talk about it. So the story behind uh, Star Wars, which is now owned by Disney, uh, which also owns Marvel. I mean, good lord, they've made trillions of dollars by now. Uh, Disney is just, plus with their Disney movies as well, like, good lord. Um, God, I want to work at Disney. Um... But uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, which was written and directed by J.J. Abrams, a uh, wonderful writer-director, very happy he did that, and the only man who's probably ever going to do a Star Trek movie, which he wrote and directed, and then a Star Wars movie. That's historic. But the story behind this is basically um, uh, Finn is a stormtrooper, or I can't remember what they're called, but with a new order, and he decides to quit. And there's a pilot that works for the uh, kind of the new Rebel Alliance, um, and they have a map which is supposed to lead to Luke Skywalker, which he gives to his droid and goes off. Uh, sounds kind of familiar, right? And we'll get to that. But uh, Poe, the like the Rebel Alliance guy, he's captured by the New Order uh, and by the kind of the new Darth Vader. Um, Oh, really? Am I blanking? Am I really blanking on that? First Order, Kylo Ren. Wow. Uh, Kylo Ren, who is a Sith, um, or basically a Sith, but he captures him. Uh, but the Finn breaks him out. They go down to this desert planet. Uh, looks like uh, Poe was killed, but he comes back later, which I'm glad. Uh, but Finn comes across this woman, uh, Rey, and they find the droid, and they decide to get them to, like, the Rebel Alliance. What are they called? It's not Rebel Alliance. Eh, I can't remember. Um, and eventually they come across Han Solo and Chewbacca, because they have the Millennium Falcon, and he tries to get them to the right people, and they meet up with Princess Leia, C-3PO, and it, it's all, again, one big battle for the galaxy against the New Order, uh, and, Ky you know, find out who Kylo Ren, who he really is, and it's all a big search for Luke Skywalker as well. And that's, I didn't explain the plot that well, but that's the plot of it, basically. And let's go ahead and get it out of the way. The plot to this is basically identical to A New Hope. It really is, with some parts of Empire thrown in. It's identical. And it confused me. I was like, something's bothering me about Force Awakens. I loved it. But what's bothering me? And someone said, it's just like A New Hope. I'm like, there it is! It's just like A New Hope! Why? Like, why would they do that? And the way it was explained, because they didn't call it the prequels, you know, they didn't call them right out, but because the prequels were kind of so maligned, they wanted to show what Star Wars was again. And what better way to do that than to kind of copy A New Hope? And I get that. I get what they were trying to do. They didn't have to, but I get why they did it. And it doesn't matter because this film is fantastic. And it's not just a ripoff of A New Hope. There's enough new stuff there as well. Uh, and every Star Wars movie kind of follows a formula anyway. But I was so excited, just like everybody else in the world, I was so excited for this movie and they kept it so secret and under wraps, which they should have. Um... But I was so, so excited. I mean, to see Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, to see Luke Skywalker, which you do, 
eventually. Uh, the ending to this, I love it so much, and it makes you wanting more, and I cannot wait for episode 8. But, there's, I mean, I, there's not much I don't like. I don't like, in the end, you know, what happens to the new Death Star, like the Star Killer. I love the fact that they, they carved it into a planet. That was awesome. But what happens with it, that pissed me off. I thought, okay, you didn't have to go that route again. But they do, whatever. Um, nothing much bothered me. I mean, the stuff with Han Solo is great. I know Harrison Ford maybe didn't want to come back to the part, and they paid him a shit ton of money to do it, but he still did his job, and he's Han Solo, and does wonderful. The new characters, I love. I love Finn. I love that a girl is the main character. I like that. And Finn is great. I'm glad they kept Poe alive. I think originally he was supposed to die. I'm glad they kept him, because he's a fun character, and I hope we learn more about him. Uh, and Finn as well. Uh, I mean, the new cast is great, and they blend in very well. And the old characters, you know, Carrie Fisher, she does well. Um, it's obvious she didn't act for a while. Like, I'm sure she'll do better in the next one, but she's still Princess Leia, and it was great to see her. Um, you know, the guy who plays Kylo Ren does a great job. You know, the Snoke character, who's kind of like the Emperor now, still a little iffy about him, but we'll see what happens in 8, because he's a little bit more prevalent. But... I mean, the special effects are great, but there's so many practical effects. Like the BB-8, the droid, who is cute as hell. He's practical. I mean, yeah, they use CG when they need to, but it's mainly practical effects, and it looks great. And that's within the spirit of Star Wars. And this felt, even though it wasn't George Lucas, this felt like a Star Wars movie. Much more than Episodes 1 and 2 did. By far. Um... And it, it, it made people believe in Star Wars again. I mean, this movie was critically acclaimed. It made maybe a couple billion. I don't know. It made a shit ton of money, as it should. Star Wars is Star Wars again. You know, and I saw it a couple times in theaters because I just enjoyed it so much. And I wanted that experience to see it in IMAX, in the theater. And even watching it at home, it's just... You know, I have it on my phone, too. I just... I... I love this movie. I really do. Like, I'm probably overpraising it. Yes, it's a ripoff of A New Hope, but I get what they were doing, and frankly, I don't care, because it brought back the fun of Star Wars, and there's still enough new stuff in it. I mean, there are a few things that are like, eh, like, the little thing in the middle with Han Solo and the other smugglers coming in, that didn't add anything to the plot, but I still love that scene. Like, it was unnecessary, but that's kind of a Star Wars tradition. There seem to be scenes that happen that really have nothing to do with the plot. So, maybe they did that on purpose. I don't know. I mean, Lawrence Kasdan came back and helped write it with J.J. Abrams and another writer. Um, I was happy for that. But, J.J. did a great job. The direction is great. Uh, the cast is fantastic. The special effects are wonderful. The story's good. The stuff with Kylo Ren and, you know, what happens to Han Solo is heartbreaking. And that scene is beautiful. I love that scene so much. I mean, I don't like how Rey, with the Force, she seems to pick up on it so quick. I don't like that, but I hope they address it. I hope they address it, Nate. Uh, if they don't, I'll be really disappointed, and that'll keep bothering me. But you just have to let that shit go. It's, it's make-believe. It's a movie. It, it just... You have to let that stuff go, guys. So many people online, they just... They take this too seriously. And it's just... It's a movie. It's never going to completely add up, you know, it's just, you know, it's like I mentioned before in Empire Strikes Back, how with Yoda on Dagobah and them running in the Millennium Falcon, Han and Leia and them, the timeline doesn't add up. It's like, well, yeah, that's a pretty big flaw, but even the greatest movie ever made, Citizen Kane, arguably, uh, has a huge flaw, where when he says Rosebud at the beginning, the very beginning of the movie, and it becomes worldwide news, what does Rosebud mean? And nobody was around to hear it. I mean, the nurse comes in shortly after, but she wasn't there when he said it. That's a big flaw. No movie is perfect. And this one, it, it just does so much right. Even when it's recreating the past, it still it does it so well. You just can't help but love it. And I thought it was a fantastic way to bring Star Wars back into the 
uh, into theaters. It, but it, it was it was just fun. The humor was great. The dramatic elements were great. Everything was just wonderful. And I love this movie more and more uh, every time I watch it. So, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. I give a four and a half out of five. Some of you may think that's a little high, and that's okay. But at the end of the day, when I can go back and keep re-watching this, and I have fun every time I do it, that's what makes it from like a four to a four and a half for me. It's not a perfect film, and I wish they maybe wouldn't have stolen so much from the original trilogy, but I get why they did. In episode eight and nine, I doubt they'll steal much. And they also wanted to get the homages out of the way. Everyone was like, what are they going to pay homage to? And there's a shit ton in this. And it's not force-fed you know, to you. It makes sense, but they kind of got them all out of the way, and now they can get to business. And I cannot wait for episode 8 next year. Um, but that's The Force Awakens. I love it. And there you go. That's my review of episode 7, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, like I said, I can't wait for episode 8. I also cannot wait for Rogue One. Uh, that will be the last Star Wars review of this month. Um, I'm so excited. I love that Star Wars movies are going to come out like every Christmas season. It just, it makes me love Christmas even more. Um, so there you go. Uh, but I did promise you one Christmas movie review of my favorite Christmas movie, and that'll come right before Christmas, so watch out for that. Uh, but I'm Phil Holmes with Too Many Movies. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video, which will be Star Wars, uh... A Star Wars Story, Rogue One. Uh, cannot wait to go see that. It's coming up soon. See you then.